Hello and welcome to Henry Willis Movie Reviews, where usually I take a look at films that I've never seen before that others likely will have done. But today I'm going to do something different and look at a film on current release. The latest instalment of The Batman from Matt Reeves, The Batman. So really to set the scene, we follow Bruce Wayne in his early years of Batman in the midst of a killing spree from the Riddler. And he's essentially trying to do a bit of detective work. Uh, in order to solve the case. That's what you really need to know, I think. So, first things first, hats off to Matt Reeves, really pulling this out of the bag. You know, based on his previous films, I had no reason to expect this to be as fantastic as it is. The casting is just absolutely perfect. I mean, Robert Pattinson is just a truly fabulous Batman, and while he's not uh, on screen as Bruce Wayne much, I think he really pulls off that part of the dual role expertly. I also really enjoyed how he's not a billionaire playboy in this film. He's grief stricken and moody, like a, a sad emo weirdo. There's a lot of trauma that he's having to endure. What with, you know, his parents' death all those years ago. You know, the way his hair looks, it's he almost feels like an anime character like Shinji from Neon Genesis Evangelion or something. You know, just burdened by carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. And the, the rest of the cast is great too. You know, Circus is a fabulous Alfred. Kravitz really carries that air of being deceptive, very sneaky and seductive very well as Selina Kyle. Also, before we get into the other performances, I just want a quick mention of just how great Peter Sarsgaard is at playing utter slime balls. He's just fabulous at it. Just that moment in the club where he's being really pathetic and creepy. Perfect. And Colin Farrell, my God. He's unrecognisable as the Penguin and I like that he's not a supervillain. He's just simply a gangster. You know, even with his name, they used it as uh, like a nickname like many mob men tend to have. And he got quite a few laughs out of me as well, which was surprising given I was led to believe that it was a really serious jet black tone throughout. But there's several moments where I laughed out loud. I mean, the sight gag where you see him waddling <laughs> was quite memorable. But Paul Dano, my God, I mean, his performance was outstanding and obviously borrowed heavily from the Zodiac Killer, what with the ciphers and the way that he uh, dressed up. But while he's in costume, there were some really great frames of references from horror cinema. I mean, for one, the opening scene where he comes out of the shadows to pummel the mare with the carpet tool. It really reminded me of that scene in Psycho where, if you've not seen Psycho, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but come on. Where the killer emerges and stabs the detective to death and he falls down the stairs. And also the shriek that he lets out that <laughs> was just utterly terrifying. That brought to mind the, the moment where Leatherface uh, in the Sexy Chainsaw Massacre kind of emerges and bashes in the head of one of the characters. <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of rambling now at this point, but you've also got the scene in the DA's car. The moment where he appears was just so reminiscent of that scene in Halloween with Michael Myers. And it's kind of unrelated, but the moment where Batman appears in the lift just felt like a huge nod to the xenomorph in Alien. But back to Dano, the way that he can portray such an unhinged individual, but that has real humanity as well. You can sort of understand where they're coming from. And it's not just this crazy person who's just completely, you're completely detached from that character. It's a real testament to his acting chops. And you can clearly see that spectre of David Fincher's Seven looming very large over this. And, you know, I won't spoil anything, but the first time around, I didn't quite understand the exchange between Riddler and Batman. But watching the second time around, the reveal is just truly remarkable and really clever writing. You know, when, when you think that he knows, but he doesn't. Plus the moment where you get a peek behind the curtain in the video where he's thanking his followers and, you know, appreciates them for watching. Hey guys, uh, 
Thanks for all the comments. It just felt so genuine, like I was watching a YouTuber or, you know, an influencer in general. And you've also got, with the news clips, a sort of homage to the look at me scene in The Dark Knight, which I really appreciated. Truth about our city will finally be unmasked. And there is also, to a degree, a conversation about toxic beliefs and taking the law into your own hands and how destructive that can be, or just mental illness even, uh, you know, creating a mass shoot, for example, and the martyrdom that this can potentially create among certain people on the internet. You know, Batman is essentially the same, but just operating on a slightly different wavelength, obviously distancing himself from others who believe that their reasoning is just as worthy as his. And this also leads me on to how the film tackles Bruce Wayne, which really confronts his privilege. Yes, he's lost his parents, but he's described as an orphan. And when he had everything he could want, you know, he wasn't in a room packed with 30 other kids and rats running around, as the Riddler says. I'm glad that they tackled that element of his character because it was feeling like in previous occasions, like, oh, woe is me, blah, blah, blah. Like, but yeah, he's still a rich kid. I mean, yeah, it's terrible, but you know, things could be worse. And I also love the dynamic between Batman and Commissioner Gordon. There's just some great pulpy noir dialogue going on. And even just the way Jeffrey Wright talks sometimes, it feels very much of that ilk, just like the, uh, yeah, we got this uh, right here. I love it particularly the scene where they're together in the cell. The detective aspect of Batman isn't something that's really been explored much in the films, but I'm really glad that they covered it extensively here, you know, from investigation to the narration as well. And I also like how inexperienced Batman is. You know, this is his second year of being the Dark Knight and it really shows there are several moments where he seems really out of his depth or is just making mistakes. But you know, he's learning as he goes, particularly with that squirrel suit, when he smacks into the bridge and just like hits the pavement really, really hard and then just hobbles off. You know, he, he feels grounded and human unlike many of the other superhero films in which you feel like there's no stakes because everyone appears to be invincible, which is why I like Batman because he's flawed and he's mortal. He doesn't have any superpowers. Even his mask looks homemade. <laughs> There's a moment in the third act as well where he's being dragged by his cape and he could not help but think of Edna Mode in that moment. No capes. Another element that really grounded it was just how little the police department were humouring this man in a bat suit walking into a crime scene where, from what I remember before, there wasn't really much opposition to that. I mean, there's occasional people going, oh, you're a freak, etc. But that's it, really. Whereas there are people who are just like, no, get him out of here, get him off the crime scene, blah, 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 blah. And that's how things would happen in real life. You know, you can't have a vigilante walking onto a, a crime scene. That's ridiculous. And also a quick mention to John Turturro, who is really menacing as Carmine Falcone. I mean, everyone here is just perfect for their roles. A lot has been made though about the fact that this film has very few female characters, but I don't really understand that complaint since the world it's exploring is devoid of women. They're completely absent from that world. And if they are there, they're just there for gangsters to ogle. The criminal underworld isn't really known for being egalitarian. You know, it's corrupt and egregious. It's men being men in the most horrific ways imaginable. I feel like that the film very consciously didn't include many female characters. You've got Selena Kyle, obviously, she's the one of the main characters, but even she states that, you know, she's sick of these white privileged assholes being in charge. And even the candidate for mayor is a black woman. I felt it was pretty obvious that she was symbolic for reform to change everything that's come before and to bring in this new age of fairer politics that are not riddled with corruption. She represents hope and progression. But anyway, back to Batman. The opening scene showing all the criminals going about their business was just fabulous. The fact that he was able to instill fear in them by the suggestion that he may be lurking in the darkness in front of them 
ready to pounce. I thought that was masterful. Just <laughs> that line, uh, they think I'm in the shadows, but I am the shadows. It's like Schrodinger's vigilante. He may be there, but he might not be there. But you don't want to take that chance, so you better scarper. Also, he looks so imposing too. There's clearly some sort of elements of the, the xenomorph in, in there as well, which I suppose might be a Batman thing in general. But certainly in this one, particularly with just how much rain there is, this it's such a drich <laughs> atmosphere in Gotham. And I also like that, you know, even civilians at this point can't trust him. They fear him as well as the criminals because they don't know what his agenda is and they're, they're scared that he might hurt them, which is great because at the end, you obviously have that kind of redemptive moment where the people start to trust him and believe that he isn't a harm to them and, you know, he's there to save them. I was rather shocked at the violence in it though, but given how they held back on the gore and the bloodletting, I just assumed it would get a 12 rating. So I was taken aback when I discovered that it got a 15, considering, they probably held back to get a lower rating when they could have just not bothered and gone whole hog regardless. Because, you know, if they're going to get the 15 rating, you may as well put in 15 rated stuff in it. Like the trap scenes and, oh God, the opening scene particularly is just horrifying. As I said, like, it's huge, hugely reminiscent of, of Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But I have to mention the score too from Maiko Giacchino that does borrow in style bits and pieces from Danny Elfman and Hans Zimmer's sort of style, but bringing in this whole new atmosphere of his own to the table. And it also really utilizes those two chords from Something in the Way by Nirvana, which plays uh, twice in the film. It's used wonderfully as this musical motif throughout. And there's music for all the characters, really, when they appear on screen. Selena Carls is a highlight with the violins purring. So good. And props to Greg Fraser too for the cinematography that it just really captures the seediness of Gotham with real mastery. It's I love how this film looks. Well, I, Matt Reeves, uh, he's just done the unthinkable and made maybe the best Batman film ever made. I mean, I do need to watch The Dark Knight again because I haven't seen it in about 10 years. But you know, that was a film that as a teen, I thought was the greatest ever made. So I don't use those words lightly. Somehow managed to be even more grounded than that and also true to the source material. And I'm absolutely in awe in it and I just can't wait to see it again. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. Well, I just had a ball watching this and a utterly stupid smile on my face throughout, especially on second viewing. I just love how there isn't one big supervillain who's gonna take over the world, but just a couple of different criminal characters who are on Batman's periphery. They're just people in Batman's way obstructing his pursuit of justice. And also just remember the penguin really reminded me a little bit of Al Capone, <laughs> though more Robert De Niro's interpretation rather than Tom Hardy's. No. Oh. So anyway, that's my thoughts on the Batman, which I'll be surprised if it's not among my favorites of the year. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. I